Hey guys, Zot here, and welcome to It's Time to Reroll, Caster Edition. If you're looking to reroll or even trying something new, this is the video for you. So, some common questions we get asked are What's the best caster? What caster should I play? Is this caster better than this caster? Well, in this video, we're going to be addressing that by covering the top three casters right now, all of which are very different in terms of playstyle. We'll go through the strengths and weaknesses of each give you a few comp suggestions and all the talents, gear and stat priorities you need to get straight into Arena. So to start off, before we get into talents, gear and even compositions, let's begin with the strengths and weaknesses of each of these classes to help you better decide what's most suited for you. First up, we have the Destruction Warlock, a very immobile but tanky caster that can dish out some of the biggest hits in Arena, as well as the potential to 100-0 any target if able to cast. Number one, very high damage potential. With Destruction Warlocks being capable of hitting upwards of 100k Chaos Bolts, if you enjoy taking your enemy by surprise and bursting people down with big hits, then look no further. Number two, very tanky. Destruction Warlocks are inherently tanky thanks to their mastery as well as demon armor. They don't look to kite, but instead soak the damage dealt to them and hit back with twice the force. Number three, strong crowd control. Destruction brings both a spammable crowd control in the form of fear, a stun from shadow fury, and also a spell lock from your pet, providing you with some very good crowd control. Number four, very forgiving. What I mean by forgiving is that you have three schools of magic, so don't have to worry too much about interrupts. No mobility, so don't have to worry about kiting or being caught out. So really, there isn't much you can mess up on this spec. Okay, now let's look at the weaknesses. Number one, easily shut down. With the majority of your damage being casted and from Chaos Bolt, teams can often shut you down or simply line of sight you, denying a lot of your damage. Number two, pet class. Pet management is quite a big part of Warlock. You need to be wary of your pet's health and where it is at all times, as your interrupt is from your pet. Just another thing to have to keep track of. Number three, limited mobility. As destruction, you're forced to spec out of demonic circle, meaning your only form of mobility is your gateway, which is on a very hefty cooldown. Destruction is more of a turret spec. You plant yourself in the middle and look to dish out as much damage as possible. Okay, so now let's take a look at the second caster we have on our list. And that is of course Elemental Shaman. If you prefer to take a more support based approach, Elemental is the best hybrid. Now I use the term hybrid very loosely as they're not really a thing anymore. However, Elemental offers great off hills, great utility and is extremely mobile. However, let's take a look at Elemental Shaman's strengths and weaknesses. Starting off with the strengths, at number one we have Disruption. Elementals are super annoying to play against thanks to the disruption they have at their disposal. A short cooldown interrupt, ground in totem, an abundance of slows, a knockback and even a stun. Number two, burst damage. Elemental doesn't have much consistent damage. However, make up for it with their burst damage, all of which is instant, which makes them extremely powerful in arena. As being able to assist your other DPS with an instant earth shock or the damage from Stormkeeper is great for setting up kills. Number three, utility. Being able to support your team with strong off hills and also keep them out of crowd control with wind shear and grounding totem makes elemental extremely strong utility wise. Number four, mobility. Ghost Wolf is one of the strongest tools in game when it comes to mobility and kiting. Not being able to be slowed is a huge strength to elemental shaman. As if you slow the enemy and simply go into Ghost Wolf, melee can find it impossible to connect back to you. Now let's take a look at the weaknesses. Number one, stuns. Elemental's first weakness is of course stuns. Elemental rely heavily on having to kite or stop damage with their disruption. And with their only defensive cooldown being unable to be used while stunned, elementals often struggle with compositions with a high amount of stuns, mainly rogues. Number two, low consistent damage. Consistent damage is also a big drawback of elemental shaman. With the majority of your damage being burst, when having your arena partner tunneled and left to free cast yourself, you can often struggle to create the pressure needed to whittle teams down. Number three, RNG. Elemental is quite RNG based. 
and you often, if you don't get overloads, your damage can often feel a little lackluster. Number four, crowd control. With a large number of classes bringing D curse now in Battle for Azeroth, Hex can often be dispelled, meaning the crowd control at your disposal is often limited. Okay, so if you haven't decided yet, at number three, we've got Frost Mage. This caster can bring it all, slows, mobility, crowd control, and even burst damage. So let's get into its strengths and weaknesses. Number one, mobility. Mobility is also a huge part of Mage's kit. Kiting your enemy and abusing your mobility from blink or shimmer is how mages land crowd control and avoid damage. Number two, slows. Frost mages have some of the most potent slows in game, as well as having two different routes. If a mage doesn't want you to connect, you simply won't. Number three, burst damage. Mages are great at dealing burst damage, and with the majority of it being instant, it's often easy to land. Abilities like Frozen Orb and Comet Storm deal huge damage during your burst windows. Number four, crowd control. Mage, in general, has a huge amount of crowd control. If it's not roots and slows, it's your spammable polymorph and counter spell. Okay, now let's take a look at the weaknesses. Number one, consistent damage. Mages are almost a support-based class in terms of the damage they deal. They barely bring any consistent damage. What I mean by this is you're not going to be able to create pressure just with your damage. You're going to have to do it via other means, mainly your crowd control, and then bursting enemies down in short windows. Number two, lack of stuns. Mages alone have zero stuns. This means they often have to pair with a class that brings some lockdown, so you can easily set up kills. This means you're heavily reliant on your team. Number three, squishy. Unlike our other two classes, mages are extremely squishy. If you mess up kiting and melee manage to connect and have uptime on you, you're going to go down extremely fast. Okay, so hopefully the strengths and weaknesses of our top three casters give you a little help in deciding which one is best suited to you. So now let's get started for each of the specs going through talents, Azerite traits and gear and a few compositions you can play so you're ready to get straight into arena. First, let's again start with Destruction Warlock and start off with Azerite traits. There is one main trait you want to aim for above the rest and that's Flashpoint. Aim to get this on three pieces of your gear. It gives you a huge boost of haste every time your Immolate ticks on a target above 80%. With the meta currently, this is going to have crazy uptime. To pair with this, the most optimal is two Crashing Chaos. This just adds to your already crazy burst during your Infernal window, a window where you are looking to create the most pressure. Finally, with one Chaotic Infernal, this is just a nice little 1.1 wonder trait as the chance to give you an instant incinerate does not stack. Moving on, for talents, they are pretty much set in stone for destruction. You're going to want flash over for their increased conflag damage and extra charges of backdraft. Reverse entropy for the extra haste, meaning this combined with flashpoint is going to be giving you crazy amount of haste. Demon skin, just for the added tankiness, Cataclysm for an easier way to get up your immolates and also deal some very good damage. Mortal Coil for the synergy with Havoc. Grimoire of Supremacy for that big burst during your Infernal. And lastly, Dark Soul Instability, as we're again aiming to get those big one-shot bolts out during your burst windows. In regards to PvP talents, we're going to be always taking both Focused Chaos and Demon Armor in most situations. Unless you know for sure you're not going to be the target, then you can drop Demon Armor. Our third PvP talent changes a little, depending on what comp you're playing and what you're up against. Entrenched in Flame provides a route which is great for helping you to secure some casts. Foulfisher can be great if you're playing with a class that already provides roots such as Mage. And then Neverward can be great to avoid some damage when facing casters. And last is Curse of Weakness, which is also good in some niche situations when you're up against a cleave, when you know you won't be able to get many Foulfishers out and they also don't have a D curse for it. Last up for the gear and talent side of things is your stat priority. Destruction wants two things, haste and mastery. 
Mastery is your most important, as not only does it provide you with a damage increase, but also helps reducing the damage that you take. It's basically a better versatility, so aim to just simply get as much mastery and haste as you can. Now for compositions, destruction is currently extremely strong, so works in a lot of compositions, but the main three I want to discuss are these. Number one, Windwalker, Lock, Shaman, or Mistweaver. This composition brings great consistent damage with the Windwalker and Immolates from the Warlock, but also has crazy burst with Chaos Bolts and the cooldowns from the Windwalker. Windwalker also brings an AoE stun and Ring of Peace to assist you in helping to land some casts, as well as a Mortal Strike debuff making enemy healers really struggle to heal through your damage. Number two, Shadow Priest, Destruction Warlock, Restoration Shaman or Mistweaver. Known as Shadow Play, this composition is strong due to how much of a threat both Destruction Warlock and Shadow Priest are when left to free cast, as teams often lack the tools required to stop you both. One of you is going to be able to deal some crazy damage. Also with Shadow providing some good crowd control, setting up kills during your Infernal window can be very deadly. Destruction Warlock, Fire Mage, Holy Paladin, Mistweaver Monk or Restoration Shaman. Again, similar to Shadow Play, this composition is strong due to having two casters able to deal insane burst damage with greater pyroblast or chaos bolt, meaning if one of you is left to free cast, the enemy is going to be in some serious trouble. You also have great crowd control with both fear and polymorph being spammable and not sharing diminishing returns. Next up, we've got Elemental Shaman again. Same as before, let's start with your Azerite traits. Elemental has two traits you should look to aim for. First is Igneous Potential. This just gives you a flat increase to your Lava Burst damage, helping to improve your overall damage, as well as the increased chance to proc, which however does not stack. Lava Shock just makes your Flame Shock ticks buff your Earth Shock damage by a set amount each tick. This is vital for your burst windows, as having that big Earth Shock is how you look to burst down enemies. As far as stat priority goes, you're mostly looking to deal burst damage, so Critical Strike, despite being nerfed in PvP, actually provides Elemental with the most burst damage per point, thanks to the passive Elemental Fury. Often, if your Earthshock or Stormkeeper crits, you can take enemies by surprise with your burst damage. Secondly is Haste. This provides you with just shorter globals and faster ticks on your Flame Shock, just helping to boost your overall damage and stack up your Lava Shock trait faster. As for talents, you're going to be wanting to take Irvin Rage, as this simply provides you with some effortless free damage. Totem Mastery, as on this tier, it provides you with the most overall damage increase again. Earthshield Next can help both yourself and your teammates with some extra passive healing, as well as increasing your casted heals to that target. Master of the Elements should always be taken and used to empower your Earth Shock when attempting to burst. Next is Nature's Guardian. This again should be taken as it helps to deal with your main weakness, which is dying inside of stuns. For the level 90 talents, Primal Elementalist is a great default pick and provides you with some nice extra damage from your empowered fire elemental and gives you access to the defensive capabilities of your earth elemental. Last up is Stormkeeper. This is hands down the best talent from this tier and should always be taken as it's an important tool for setting up kills. As for PvP talents, the first talent you should always be taking is Lightning Lasso. This is just an extremely powerful talent that combines high burst damage with a stun. Use it together with your teammates offensive cooldowns to secure kills. Just make sure to position yourself near a pillar to avoid being interrupted or crowd controlled whilst channeling it. Sky Fury is also a great pick in most situations. As you're taking crit, this can be a great cooldown to pop before your burst windows. Grounded Totem should be your last pick. It's good when up against casters, for obvious reasons. However, when not up against casters, you can swap out Grounding for either Elemental Attunement if you know you're not going to be the target and need some extra damage, 
or spectral recovery for some added mobility. In regards to compositions, again, same as Destruction, Elemental is in an extremely good position, so has a lot of comps available, so we cover what I deem the top three. Elemental, Mage, Druid, Pala or Mistweaver. This composition can be played with pretty much any healer, and is strong due to the combined burst damage of both Elemental Shaman and Mage, allowing you to easily score kills inside of a Lightning Lasso. You also have great crowd control from the mage and both of you are extremely hard for melee to connect to and both of you also have access to slows making this composition extremely frustrating to play against. Number 2 Elemental, Warrior, Mistweaver or Druid Known as Thundercleave this composition likes to train one target and keep the pressure rolling having great consistent damage and mortal strike from the warrior combined with your burst damage and general tankiness from all three members makes this composition extremely strong. Elemental Shaman, Balanced Druid, Restoration Druid or Mistweaver or even Restoration Shaman. This composition's main strength is in its instant damage burst. Star Surges from a Boomkin inside of your lasso can quickly kill any target whilst they are still locked down. Combine this with the consistent damage from Boomkins and the general tankiness and off healing provided by the two hybrids makes it incredibly difficult to score a kill against, often going to dampening and then being the victor. Last up we've got Thrust Mage, again same as before let's first start with what Azerite traits you should be aiming for. The ideal traits are free Tunnel of Ice and free Flash Freeze. This is perfect as Tunnel of Ice helps with your consistent damage and Flash Freeze just adds to your burst windows and allows you to get off some more shatters. In terms of stat priority, you're looking to maximise haste and then versatility, so just aim for pieces with both on. In regards to talents, your standard build looks like this. You're going to want Ice Nova for the extra burst and shatter capabilities, Shimmer for the extra mobility and easier time landing crowd control, Encounters flow just for that added damage and the other two are actually quite useless in PvP. Then Ebb and Bolt as this gives you some on demand burst and the extra brain freeze proc. On the 75 tier Frigid Winds is the standard pick unless you're up against a Restoration Druid where you won't be able to land polymorphs then of course you'll want Ring of Frost. On the level 90 tier Comet Storm is the go-to, as again it's just some great on-demand burst that you can combine with Roots for a Shatter. And finally, Ray of Frost. This is another great offensive cooldown that can be used when you can freely cast to deal some nice pressure. As for PvP talents, Temporal should be taken by default against any team that goes on you. Concentrated Coolness should also be taken as the extra damage on Orb as well as being able to aim it is very important. For your third talent, Deep Shatter is extremely good when paired with your Tunnel of Ice Azerite trait and helps to iron out Mage's weakness of consistent damage. You can also consider swapping out Temporal for either Kleptomania, Prismatic Cloak or Dampened Magic in some certain matchups. Now, let's take a look at a few compositions that Frost Mages really excel in. Elemental, Frost Mage, Restoration Druid. Again, this composition can be played with pretty much any healer and is strong due to the combined burst damage of both the Elemental and Frost Mage, allowing you to easily score kills inside of a Lightning Lasso. You also have great crowd control with Polymorph and the CC your healer brings and both of you are extremely hard for melee to connect to and both also have access to powerful slows making this composition extremely frustrating to play against. Next up, Frost Mage, Windwalker, Restoration Druid or Priest. Almost a simplified Rogue Mage. This composition focuses on doing high pressure to one target and going for crowd control on healers when you have pressure. However, doesn't rely as much on crowd control as Rogue Mage as you have a lot of consistent damage. So either a para or blink CS on the enemy healer can often end games. And last up is Frost Mage, Assassination Rogue, Restoration Druid. Probably the strongest Rogue Mage variant right now. RMD relies on rotating crowd control onto the enemy healer with your Restoration Druid. 
abusing your two separate spammable crowd controls that are both on different diminishing returns in the form of Cyclone and Polymorph, whilst your rogue applies pressure inside of a kidney shot. Ok guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and helped you somewhat in deciding what class to play, or simply inspired you to try something new. Thanks for watching and be sure to plus skill if you enjoyed. And also remember if you want more information on the classes included in this guide, be sure to check out the rest of our more in depth class specific guides.